Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2019 battle series. We are in the Moon series. We kicked off this week with a brand new team based and centered around that Curum White. We've changed it halfway through the week in yesterday's episode. So if you've missed any of the episodes from this week, go back and look at the progress and look at why we've changed things because it's very interesting, I think, looking at the progression of this team and where we're going to end up with it a week on Friday. If you have missed them and you want to check them out, they'll go back up here. I'll put a card in for you lovely people so you can check them out. But just to recap, the team is Kieran White, Arcanine, Silverleo, Tapulele, Bomber Snow and Mandibuzz. Now we had some incredible games yesterday after the changes that we made and I feel a lot more comfortable going into matches today. So without further ado, let's get into it. But as always, before we do, if you enjoy the content, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all of these contents, these daily battle series and our guides. Other things that we have on the channel as well. And leave your comments in the comment section below because I love more than anything hearing from you lovely people. So let's get into it. Manibus did a good job yesterday when we brought it to the first game. Obama Snow's not been doing bad. And we were so close yesterday in our last game. I'm not going to say anything, but it's a big 50 50 that we, we might have got right, we might have got wrong. But uh, you'll have to go back and check that out if you are interested in seeing it. Uh, let's go for some music. Uh, Elite 4, no. Guardian Deity. Yes, so we've got our first opponent of the day from Japan. Playing a team of... Incineroar, Kyoga, Katana, Xanius, Tornadus and Amoongus. I'm sorry I'm doing it in that voice as well, but this is a perfect team for us to go up against. This is a team that we kind of faced a couple of times and said, right, we need to tech some stuff in. So here's testing time, see if it works. Hopefully it does work, but we'll have to wait and see. So. Um, we've got the Xerneas and the Kyogre as a restricted pair here. We know what this team is going to be trying to do. It's got the Tornadus to set help up with the Tailwind. It could potentially have the Zemu, so we need to be careful for it there. We've got the Incineroar with the Fake Out support. We've got the Cortana that's just going to be probably Assault Vest. It could have Tailwind, could be Sashed as well. And then the Amoongus there is going to be the Trick Room check for this team. It's likely that the Kyogre is Scarfed. So we need to approach it in a certain way. I think I'm going to lead off with Tapu Lele for sure because the terrain helps against any potential taunts and things from that Tornadus. Decide to go down that route. It also gives us a nice way to indicate what the Kyogre is going to be doing. Stops the Incineroar from being so supportive. Um, I think as well what we'll do is... Hmm, do we lead with Curum in this matchup? I do want to bring Curum to this matchup. Yeah. Um... Do I want to bring Mandibuzz? Mandibuzz is pretty nice here. I'm going to bring Mandibuzz. I'm going to bring a Bomber Snow. And I think we'll bring Sogaleo as our last one. Leave Kyurem at home, boys and girls. Sorry, Kyurem, but you'll have a chance in our next game. So, can't bring it to every game, unfortunately. Although that would be nice. But I think it's because of its niche ability. It's like, it's why it's not a top tier Pokemon. Like, you can't just bring it to every game. It's like Kyogre, you feel... Yeah, I can bring this to every game. Crowdon, pretty much feel like I can bring it to every game. Xerneas, 100%, I can bring this to pretty much every game. But I think some of the other restrictors, they have a few limitations where you can't always bring them to every game. I'm going to see Amoongus and Incineroar come up for my opponent here. This is a pretty interesting lead for my opponent. We're in a, a nice kind of um, spot already here. The Amoongus has blatantly got the, uh, the Psychic the psychic resist berry and that's why it's happy to sit in front of this tapu lele right now um so we could potentially just switch in a bomber snow we're not going to see a fake out from that slot and i think what we'll do is get our tailwind up asap because i don't want to get put to sleep i really don't i don't want lele not being able to perform later in this game so i'd imagine we'll see a fake out from the incineroar into the mana buzz if we're not grounded and we'll see a spore into the tapu lele slot of course my opponent has a lot of variations and options that they could go for but i think at the same time that would be probably my play in this situation whether or not they do that is another thing altogether so oh no fake out what if we just see a double in on the uh, Tapu Lele? Good old Tapu Lele here. There's a knockoff coming out. And it's going to be into the Bomber Snow. Break our Sash. Um, and a Spore into that slot. But into the Mandibuzz, you crazy person. Okay, this person does not play Pokemon too much because you do not know your abilities. So Overcoat does give us protection against all um, powder moves. So they obviously didn't know that, which is a little bit frustrating for us because um, I kind of 
don't want a bomber slot out right now because the Kyogre can just come in at any point. Um, now we could get Sogaleo in, um, but at the same time, it's a little bit. I think Tapu Lele is the best thing to bring in right now, and we just. Mm, I think, yeah, we foul play. Foul play into the Amoongus, get some damage off onto it. We've got the Tailwind up, so we're not in too bad a spot. Hmm. Could have just kept the Tapu Lele in there. Our player coming out. Another, another knockoff into the Madibus. But we have had that seed activated, so it's not going to be doing too much. Um, it's going for the spore again. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't think this player's like timing out, but I just don't get it. I don't get it. I do not get it. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of this pesky Amoongus. And in case it switches out now, let's just snarl. Because if the Kyogre comes in... Okay, we're not going to see that. There's the Resist Berry. But I think it's in a... Uh, it's had enough damage done to it now where we'll be able to take it out. Oh, it actually does survive. But the Snarl is going to be enough to take it down before it can actually do anything. Uh, the Incineroar is left a bit unchecked, but is it just going to knock off again? I mean, it can take away our Scarf, but at this point, I'm not really too worried about that yet. Because the Kyogre probably comes in now. But with the Amoongus out of the way, like the Incineroar is the one thing that we want to get, want to remove. Oh, the Xerneas coming in. Hmm. But we just Psy Shock and Snarl it. We could see it protect 100%. Like, that would not surprise me at all. But if the Incineroar takes it down here, it opens the door for Sogaleo to come in. Which makes things a lot easier. Um, and I think at this point we want to just make sure that we've got a Bomber Snow on the back. To come and disrupt the, the rain when that does hit the field. Yeah, we're just seeing the Zernish protect. So my opponent is actually making some plays here. We'll remove the Lele from the field, I reckon. Um, but like I say, it doesn't really matter too much now because we've got the Sogaleo to come in in the back. Um, and disrupt a lot. We could superpower the Incineroar, uh, we could Sunsteel Strike. Okay, so we're going to actually see U turn Kyogre come in. Kyogre. Maybe they haven't brought the Kyogre. Ah, of course they brought the Kyogre. And there's the rain. There's the rain. A tailwind pit is out, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, but we can bring in, bring back our good old Abomas Snarl. I could snarl and just bulldoze as well, but hmm. Could switch straight out into Sogaleo. Because I feel like Incineroar comes in and just snarl. Because I think the Kyogre switch is straight back out and the Incineroar comes in. And the Xerneas goes for the Geomancy. It's just I think this turn is probably the turn where our Psychic Terrain runs out. Oh, you stay in and just water spout. Okay. Right, that's. That's pretty mad. Okay. Hmm. I don't really understand water spouting in front of an Obama Snarl that was would take it and really would threaten your Kyogre knockout. But it's paid off for them here. We are able to get the Snarl <coughs> onto both targets. But um, mm, the water spout is threatening, and threatening us this turn. Um, and we could hope that my opponent goes... Oh, this is a turn that they don't water spout, I don't think. I don't think they do water spout here. At the same time, if we don't, if we underestimate the play just to water spout and dazzling gleam, I think we could be in a lot of trouble. 
Uh, so I kind of want a wide guard. And Tailwind. And hope that the Kyogre doesn't switch out for the Incineroar. If it does, then... It's going to be difficult to kind of bring this back. Okay, so we're not going to see that. We're going to get the wide guard off. Hopefully we see... Oh, there's a Moonblast. We needed that. We Oh, it's into Sogaleo. Huh. There's a water spout. Hmm. Problem is, we're not going to be able to outspeed this Xerneas still with our Sogaleo. So the match is pretty, it's still pretty done. Like, we, we, hmm. we shouldn't have allowed the Xerneas to get the, um, I mean, we can stun Steel Strike, and we can... Yeah, it's difficult now. It's really difficult. Because we, can, we can't... We've not really got many options to deal with this. Uh, I kind of blame how things... Were, like, how we approached it at the start of the turn. We kind of expected our opponent to do one thing and um, doing weird things. It's obviously won them the game in the end, but at the same time, it's, it has made it a bit more awkward for us. Uh, we are going to be able to um, get the Sun Seal Strike, but at the same time, I just feel like we're still not in a great pl place. We're not in a great place at all because we still don't outspeed the, the Xerneas with our Sogaleo. Um, one thing we could potentially do is switch out Sogaleo into a Bomber Snow. We're not gaining any traction here, though, because we'll still be in the same place. Unless we can get a bulldoze off with a bomber snow. Um, and I don't think we take a moon blast from this rain, plus one moon blast from Xerneas, unfortunately. Hmm. It's a fake out. Yeah. Moon blast into Mandy. Nah, Mandy doesn't take it. Hmm. So I guess the one thing we could hope for, and it's no hope at all. There's no hope. There is no hope. We just lose this game. Um, yeah. And I think we. I think this is a game we could have won. We've got the tools to do it. It's just we've not executed it at all, right? We've not executed it at all. Um. Yeah, the hill. The hill is gonna jank up. Sogaleo this next turn. I mean, we could try and just be get the score a little bit down so we're not losing as badly. I predict the Xerneas to protect here, yeah, so we can get the Incineroar with superpower. But at the same time, the hail kills our Sogaleo, and if that doesn't take us down, then the Bulldoz from our own Abomus now will do the dirty work anyway. Bye bye, Sogaleo. Self destruction. <laughs> uh, no, I think the big thing there was not letting the Xerneas get the get its geomancy up. Um, and once the geomancy is up, and because we took so much, like we banked on the Kyogre not staying in water spouting, um, and taking so much damage with Sogaleo, it put us so far behind at that point. Like in this team. When we're going up against Xerneas, we need to have a very healthy Sogaleo to, to help deal with the likes of Xerneas and stuff like that. And when it just becomes a little bit too far gone with, with damage, then it's hard to kind of maneuver into positions where we can bring it back. But uh, good game to my opponent. We will gracefully forfeit and we will move on to our next game of the episode. But they're taking their time. Uh, imagine if they forfeit and it's like a double forfeit tie. It'd be the first tie I've ever had. Is that a tie? Is it? No. We forfeit. <laughs> but good game. Good game. Still some things to take from that matchup as well and how we're approaching it and how we need to protect certain Pokemon there. Um, I think Kieran would have probably been... Not a bad Pokemon to bring. Um, and we're still 
I don't know if I'm massively convinced with the Y God and Sogaleo. It is useful, but whenever you're kind of locked into Y God with Sogaleo, it means you're not attacking with it. And that's one thing that I'm not a massive fan of because I like Sogaleo to be an attacking threat. I don't like it to be passive. And although the support is really, really useful sometimes, I think it is sometimes a little bit too predictable. But we've got our next opponent of the day playing a team of good it's another one we can take a bonus not two Kyoga Lugia Ludicolo Raichu Serena and Crocodile Crocodile the little crocodile so um yeah a bonus is really good here it disrupts the rain completely it hits the Kyoga the Ludi the Serena the Crocodile and the Lugia for really good damage uh, breaks potential sashes that we've got on the Raichu as well so I think it's definitely something we want in this match I also think that Mandibuzz uh, can do a really nice job here, especially against that Lugia with Snarl support. Tapu Lele is also going to be very useful. Um, I do, as I say, I want to bring the Obama Snarl, and hmm, I think for our last slot, what do we want? Do we want Sogaleo here? Um, it's not bad against Lugia for sure. Um, it's not bad against the majority of this team, apart from the Crocodile. Whereas the Curum, what, what are we doing with the Curum? We can hit the Lugia for good damage. Um, the Ludi, Serena, the Crocodile, on bad. Um, but I think the Sogaleo, I kind of prefer just for its. Mm, do I? Yeah, yeah, let's go Sogaleo. And see how we get on in this one. Hmm. The other thing I'm noticing with the team is when I'm wanting to select certain things, I'm having to leave more often than not one restricted behind, which does put you at a disadvantage when your opponent's bringing both of theirs. So, um, but it's just part and parcel of, of using a bit more of a niche Pokemon, I think. Uh, again, we're going to see Serena, and we're going to see Lugia come out for my opponent. So we'll get that Psychic Seed activated. Um, hmm. Now, what do we do? Do we tailwind to match their tailwind? Or do we snarl to match their. Uh, I think we tailwind. They probably tailwind regardless. Um, do they attack with Serena, though? That's the question. Or do I just snarl? Because I can tailwind at any point. I think snarling is probably going to get us. The, the only thing is with snarling is that if the Lugia goes for the Z tailwind. Um, it overrides any stat reduction, doesn't it? Which makes me want to just. I'm gonna, I'm gonna side shock into the Serena. I think Mandibuzz isn't a bad answer to Lugia, but it's just the the Z Tailwind that could be problematic, which I totally expect here. So here we go. But at the same time, those Aerobat blasts are pretty weak. Pretty weak, but it's nice just keeping up with the tailwind. It means Lele gets another another pop at something next turn if we needed to. And as you turn, we're gonna see Kyogre come in, I think, which I don't mind at all because it does mean that we can snipe it a little bit, offer a little bit of damage. No, it's a crook. The crocodile, crocodile. Okay, that's that's all right. Um, we'll snarl uh, and we'll bring in a bomber snow. Hopefully, we don't say like rock slide, aero blast into the the lele slot. Because if we've got a sash attack going into this next turn, it does help. Oh. That's a misclick. No, 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 it's not. Oh, crap. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is like the most dedicated. Holy crap. I can't believe we actually took that with both. Plus six. <laughs> Cookadale avoids there, which is a little bit annoying. Um, wow. 
you're a madman. You are indeed a madman. Uh, we have to sack some stuff here, don't we? Uh, I mean, we roost and we protect because the crook goes down this next turn. We can't protect mana buzz, unfortunately. If we can get a cheeky roost off somehow, if the rock slide misses us, that would be ideal. Ooh, it's got an earthquake. What's a Lugia? Is a Lugia going to actually not attack the Mandibus? Uh, it's dang dangaroos. Dangaroos, indeed. This is what uh, Ice Shard would have come in very useful. Yeah, so the crew going down. Normally when you crit your partner to activate like something like that, you, um, you normally... You normally don't want to be doing as much damage um, to your <laughs> to your partner in Pokemon, to be honest. But I mean, it's fine, isn't it? It's fine. Um, let's go Dazzling Gleam. That should be enough to get the Serena, and uh, let's go Blizzard as well, because it'll do a good chunk to the Lugia. Ah. Depends where the Lugia is going to target into. It's probably into the Lele. Arabast. Is it into Lele? But it does mean we get a blizzard off. Wow, we actually take that. Uh, what? I can't believe we actually take that. That's madness. And that's enough to get the Lugia. Whoop. Okay, that's good. That's really good for us. Tabalele goes down to the hill, which is a little bit annoying, but it's fine. Tailwind Pit is out, Tailwind Pit is out, and is it Kyogre? It's got to be Kyogre, hasn't it? It has to be Kyogre. Kyogre. Here we go. Alright. We got Wide Guard. We were talking about it's non not so usefulness before. Is it Scarf Kyogre? Is it Scarf Kyogre? Because we could Wide Guard in Grass Knot here. Could all go wrong. Could all go wrong. But every turn could always go wrong, couldn't it? We will Wide Guard. And we will go for that cheeky little Grass Knot. And hope they lock into Water Spout. Because I expect they will. If it's scarfed, 100% they lock into it, I think. Water spout! There we go. Okay. Now we should be able to win this one. And there's the grass knot. Which is not quite enough, but it is enough to um, to win us this game, for sure. Because the water spout's going to be doing absolutely nothing now. We will knock off, and we will... Well, we don't even need to. We know it's probably locked into water spout. So I mean, we just wide guard again, and let Bomber Snow have all of, all the glory, all the glory in the world. And Bomber Snow, at least we can come back with a, a victory here. My opponent just forfeits, so that is a very good game. So, guys, it's been an interesting episode. Um, we've had one not so good game and one really positive game. We've seen the the craziest things as well with the arrow blast into the crocodile. Anger point. It could have went totally wrong, but we managed to kind of come back from it. A crazy game and a really nice, exciting one to feature today. So we will wrap things up there, guys. Uh, I'll just say thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you've enjoyed the episode. And just a quick reminder: I'm doing this every day, this week and next. I'll probably stop after that and just drop them in occasionally. But we have got a flinched squad, um, flinched clothing giveaway going on at the minute. If you would like to enter to celebrate the launch of flinchclothing.com, you can hop over there. Sign up to our mailing list. As long as you're signed up before the 1st of March, you're going to be entered into getting this huge, lovely goodie bag for yourself. So if you want to do that, hop across to flinchclothing.com and uh, check that out. But I'm going to end it up there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of the day, and we'll see you for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.